What is up guys and welcome back to the channel. So in today's video, I'm going to be working on a X3. Let me fix my hair. So I'm going to be working on an X3. It's a 2016 uh, Touring Edition or some kind of edition. It has a little problem. It has a little issue with uh, thermostat. So I've used my iCarly scanner, scanner, scanner tool. So I'm going to show you guys. So this is what I use. This is not a promotional video, but if you have a BMW or Volkswagen, this thing is really handy because there's a lot of stuff you guys can do with this, including uh, do some coding in your vehicle. For example, folding your mirrors in, a couple other things. Also works on the Volkswagen. You can also scan your Chevy Corvette, but you cannot code anything because there's nothing to code on this vehicle. So anyways, back to the video. So let's go ahead and pop the hood so I can show you guys what I'm gonna be working with. No key. We'll take care of that issue. Let's go back here. Pop the hood. Alright, here we go. Pop the trunk. Let's see. That was close. Maybe could have made it. Well, here's the parts. Uh, in the link in the description. I'm gonna push you to give you the part number for the for the thermostat housing, which goes bad. It's shown the circuit is. All right, guys. So this is your thermostat uh, housing. It sits right here. We're gonna to need to uh, unclamp these hoses. There's a few of them, so we can get to it. What I'm gonna do is I'm gonna put a. I'm gonna catch bucket on the bottom, drain the coolant so we can get to here. All right guys, so I got a heater going and uh, it's fall in Michigan. It's getting a little cold, so I'm gonna be working on this. So for now is, I'm gonna open it up. I'm gonna jack the car up, put a ramp underneath so I can drain the, so I can drain the coolant out of the vehicle, which is, this should be the number one step drain the coolant and then you can work your way around because if you don't, if you just start pulling the thermostat housing off, you know your coolant is gonna start leaking and you're gonna cause a huge mess underneath the vehicle. If you're having the same issues with the BMW, you can go ahead and get them done. In this case, the X3 with a 2.8 liter, I think, uh, turbo engine, four cylinder, they have issues with uh, thermostats and with the housings, sending unit or sensor or something like that. So that's, that's, that's what the issue is with this one. But we're gonna get that fixed. And uh, this is the part that I had to order. And so I'm gonna put all the part numbers and everything uh, in the description down below. So you guys can go ahead and uh, see where, you, where I got the parts and all the tools that I'm gonna be using as well. So they will actually get you more information on my videos. Because I've been uh, getting a lot of comments down below asking different kind of ways of doing different kind of things but uh, I'm gonna do the best I can on this video to uh, show you a lot more information on it and uh, hopefully we get it done without breaking anything else all right guys so we got a car up in uh, ramps so now we're gonna have to go underneath pull this shield off shield plate there's a bunch of uh, eight uh, millimeters Little tiny bolts on there. I'm gonna pull that off and uh, see if we can find that plug for the radiator so we can drain it in a basket right here. Once we do that, then we're gonna start working on. All right, guys, so we got a skin plate off, off the car. There's like a million of these little things. And uh, you will have also two 10 millimeters, the plastic clips. They're screwing one on the driver's side here and one on the passenger side over there, holding a skid plate up. So I just pushed it underneath the car. Don't need that one. So yeah, I got all this to the side, put them right here. And uh, let me go ahead and uh, find the drain uh, plug so we can get it one out. All right, so I got the breather tube out of the way. It's just right here. So. This one goes right here. 
So you might want to get this one out of the way. So it goes from here to here. And I got cut this sensor out. So this one, this is a code that's showing short, short uh, circuit to thermostat. So this one is, uh, so that that's a bad one. And this is just your PVC uh, air meter right here on this side. So we got an uh, easy access to get to here. Well, the thing is, this radiator doesn't have the plug for us to drain the coolant down. So what I'm gonna do is, I'm just gonna see if I can uh, remove this bottom hose uh, that goes into turbo. Or I'm just gonna remove this one, see if I can unplug this one, keep it up, and hope that uh, a lot of coolant is not gonna go to waste. I'm gonna put a, I'm gonna put a catch bucket underneath and uh, see if I just don't lose a lot of coolant. But uh, yeah, I'm gonna just try it this way and see how this goes. All right, guys. So we are at. Uh, <clears throat> we have removed all the housings. I mean, all the hoses. So we have. A, we got a bit of mess down here, so we are working now on a removing an actual nut right here. Okay, we dropped it. Okay, let's get to the other one. These are a little bit hard to see, but they are down here for sure. So kind of work with your light and ask for the best from your light. You really have to come under. So I know they're coming off easier than going back on, but uh, I'll clean up and see if I can let them. Start them up. So there is a hose underneath. I really don't feel like taking off right now. So this hose right here is on the way. I really don't feel like taking that one off. Let's see if I can uh, work it this way. All right, so. This is the old one, this is the new one. So, I mean, if you compare these two, they are identical. So this one is about $70, $80 at your online store for your BMWs. And uh, if you're an authorized dealer or a mechanic, you can get it for that kind of price. If you're not, then it's about $130, $140. Bucks. But, uh, the dealer was asking for a whole $2,700 for the whole job. And as you guys can see, it's just these two bolts that are holding it in. I mean, you have to plug in a couple lines, sensor, bleed the system, and, uh, and uh, add about a gallon of coolant in here, and you'll be fine. I mean, the process takes about maybe an hour for the whole thing. I mean, I'm doing it first time, and uh, it's pretty straight up forward. Nothing really on the way. So we'll get this old one back in the box and uh, put a new one back in. I'm gonna reinstall this one. So I'm gonna reinstall this one, put everything back in, and I'm gonna show you just a little bit here and there which way in order you wanna plug everything in. And uh, the bleeding system, I'll explain as we get to it. All right, so I got uh, those two bolts tightened and now we are going to be working on problem is this car doesn't have any steel on it it's all aluminum all this okay this magnet here i'm trying to find a good spot for the magnet to stick so i can have light but anyways yeah so we got all this tight and i got a screwdriver and tighten this guy up i'm gonna need both of my hands guys for this one but uh yeah let me uh tighten this one up and uh 
All right, guys, so literally it took everything five minutes to button everything up. It's straight up thing. So I've installed this hose right here, the breather hose. I've installed. So it literally took a good three minutes maybe to put all this back in. So reinstall the sensor one, or sen sensor two that goes into the housing that we replaced. Uh, put this hose back in, make sure it clicks in. Put this one in, the breather hose, make sure this one clicks in on the bottom and top. Make sure you put this one here, tighten all the clamps, the bottom clamp, make sure you tighten that one too, because that one has to go up. Uh, okay, let's just put this bracket back here. All right guys, so we have finally put this uh, housing back in. Now we have to go get some coolant because I thought I had some European coolant, but uh, no, I don't. I have, uh, uh, I think this is violet. I need blue, yeah. So this one that I have, it's a violet color, which is like purplish pinkish. I need some blue coolant for this one. GM vehicles. Yeah, I don't have any coolant for this car. So I'm gonna have to jump in a, maybe wet. We'll get some coolant. For coolant, we have to add here. Because we lost about a gallon of coolant doing this process. So we're gonna add about a gallon of coolant here. Hey guys, so we have the garage all cleaned up. As you can see behind me, I swept everything up. So this is the old and the tools that I have used. So, so this is for your skid plate. It's an eight millimeter screwdriver for one of the clamps. 10 mil for also for a skid plate. They have two bolts on each side. And I use a T30. So it's a T30, uh, which one is this? Oh, okay. T30. This is to remove the housing bolts from the, from here. So you're gonna have two, not, two Two screws that are T30s. You're gonna need extension, and then use this guy right here in order to get to it. So basically, you don't need a lot of tools, and you also need a tray to collect all the coolant, to spill it out, and uh, swap it up, put a new one in, plug it in. So it's my first time doing it. It took me about a, took me maybe a good 30, 40 minutes, I would say. And uh, I lost about a gallon and a half of coolant. You're gonna need a European blue, uh, blue European coolant. So that's the one I put in. I use about a gallon and a quarter. So about a four and a half quarts of coolant. Went back in, let the car run, kept the reservoir open. Everything bubbles came up. Now it's running perfectly fine. So I want to thank all of you guys for watching the videos. Subscribe to my channel and make sure to watch the whole video so you don't miss any steps. All right, thank you. And I see you in the next one.